Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, now today's video is once again a little bit different and it's a video I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, basically, when you're building a model or reviewing a model, it's real easy as you're building it to, to really fall in love with it. And then later uh, to reflect upon it a little bit more clearly. And obviously not all models are equal. There are some that are better than others. And reviewing models one by one uh, makes it kind of hard to point out some things that are done better in one model, not done as well in another. So this video is really gonna be going from kind of the rougher models to the best models and hopefully give you a little bit more of an idea of pros and cons of some of these models and give you an idea of honestly what models are better than others in my very subjective opinion. So I'm going to do a countdown from number 20 to what I consider to be the best of the Star Trek model kits. And these bottom three were a tough call because they're models I love, but looking at them objectively, they aren't great. So coming in number 20, the Romulan Warbird. And this is a tough one because frankly, I love this model. I had an absolute blast doing this paint job, but looking at it, it is 100% a product of its time. Uh, it doesn't really have a scale where it matches anything else, even the other adversary kits. There is a ton of putty work and seam work to make this neck fit smoothly to the body. Uh, you really have to build this entire part here out of putty to make it so that this wing wraps around the nacelle rather than it being three separate pieces. Uh, I will say that round two in this latest release did a wonderful job giving us window decals uh, to represent those tons of tiny lights. Uh, they tried to recreate some of the detail that was missing through a decal. And it's fun. It's fun to paint those different colors of the green and those streaks, uh, but out of scale, lots of putty work, um, having to make up the windows with decals and this one, really no help in lighting it. You have to take a pin vise to cut out all those windows if that's something you wanna do. So this is number 20, kind of one of the weaker Star Trek models. All right, coming in at number 19, the runabout from Deep Space Nine. And once again, this is a, this is a tough one to give a bad score to because I love Deep Space Nine. I love the runabout. Um, and once again, really fun paint job, doing all the different panels, weathering a little bit, using a wash to bring out the panels. But objectively, is it good as a model? It's got some problems. Uh, first, all of these wonderful panel lines, too deep and a little bit out of scale. Um, and the big thing that kind of goes wrong with this is it's a big model and there is no interior. You have big windows along the back. You have a big cockpit. It's done in a 70 second scale, which means you're comparing it to airplanes and fighters and all of those have at least cockpits. Um, so not having an interior really does hurt this. Um, once again, I love it, but if you've got windows like that, you've got to include an interior. Um, and it's big enough to light, but is it easy to light? Uh, you know, there's no clear parts for these back engines. Uh, these front parts, you have to scrap those yourself. So you have to cut them out. You have to lose the detail. You have to put your own clear insert in, uh, big nacelles. And then, you know, it's just a product of older model making. You know, these ridges don't line up from top and bottom going across. Um, there were really big marks where they come off the spruce because the spruce are so thick. Um, and frankly, I think it's really big on a shelf um, compared to the Warbird. I know you can't go back in time, but if there's no interior in the runabout, I wish it was half the size. Then I could fit three of these 
on a shelf and do a couple different variations. And it wouldn't be kind of as obvious as when you get in to look into it that it needs an interior. Coming in at 18, we have the USS Excelsior. And once again, gorgeous model, a product of its time. Uh, you have gaps and putty work back here at the rear engines. Uh, the constructions of these nacelles, uh, they're a little bit floppy just with the top sitting on the clear part. I wish there was like a peg that went from the top to the bottom to hold it all together. Now this is the best the Excelsior model kit has ever been. Round two made some big improvements uh, to make it more accurate, to redo different pieces, to give them better shapes, uh, to fix some of the weird ridges. And they now include parts that let you build it either as the Excelsior from Star Trek III or from Star Trek VI with different bridges, with different impulse engines, um, different decals. But as we compare it to the next models, you'll see where this one kind of falls down. And a big part of it is it does not have molded windows. So when you try and light it, and this is a big enough model that you should be lighting it, or you can light it, no reason you, you must. Um, without molded windows, it's much, much harder to get those windows looking good. Um, I had to just kind of put decals on and try my best to get the windows to line up. Um, but without molded windows, I kind of have to dock this one down a little bit. So it's, it's good, it's better than it ever has been. Uh, but the older construction, the fact that you have to do so much with decals to bring out the detail, and the fact that it doesn't have molded windows makes it a step below uh, some of the other model kits. Now this is in one one thousandth scale, which means it's the first model we've looked at today, which will be in a consistent scale with other model kits. And that is definitely a point in its favor. Coming in at number 17, the USS Enterprise 1701E from the Next Generation Movies. Now this one has a point in its favor and above the Excelsior, the molded in windows, which make it much, much easier to drill the windows out keep them in the right places, keep them proportional, and look a lot better, um, more accurate than the Excelsior. There are still problems. The back shape of these pylons where they just come out at an angle, that is not right. If you want that to look right, you'll have to get some aftermarket pieces. The deflector dish housing is not right. It's rounded on this model kit when it should be square. And there's an important scene that plays out on that square um, flooring. So that is an inaccuracy you can, that people will notice. Um, you have to do a lot of modification to cut out material here under these blue nacelles. You have to carve trenches in between these two parts for the pylons, uh, but the molded in windows, slightly more modern um, in design at least than the Excelsior just gives this one the edge to be above the Excelsior. And it is in 1 1400th scale, which means it will be in scale with other models that we look at. Coming in at number 16, we have the USS Enterprise 1701C. And this one gets the edge on the Excelsior and on the Enterprise E because of what round two did with it in this most recent release, which is molding it in translucent clear. So that's kind of the steps of the the help they give you in lighting it. Uh, the Excelsior, no help at all. No pre-molded ones to actually get the windows in the right place. The Enterprise E, you've got molded windows to help you drill and cut openings. And then this translucent white, um, really no cutting, no drilling. The mold, The windows are molded in. So after you have painted and primed the model and added your base coats. You scrape away the paint with a little scraping tool and you get great looking windows right out. Um, this one originally back in the 90s was cast and clear to help people light it. So you don't have to trench the pylons. There's built in space there to do it. Um, it is once again in scale. So these next generation ships, these are in scale to each other, both 1400th scale. And that's why 
this model kit really does kind of get the edge over the Excelsior and the Enterprise E. This is really kind of one of the first models where it's going to be easy to light, not too much modification needing to be done on the model kit. Coming in at 15th is something a little bit different. This is a two pack. And when I got my big 350th Oberth USS Grissom, um, I packed away my little one. So I'll put up some little pictures of the Oberth, but this was a two pack between the Klingon Bird of Prey and the USS Grissom. Um, they are in one 1000 scale, so they will be in scale with other ships. They are small, fun builds that are very accurate, uh, very easy, very modern. You won't be needing to sand things. You won't be needing to putty things. Um, it will be glue them together, paint them on the Grissom. You do a fair amount of decaling to give it the detail, uh, but the Klingon Bird of Prey, that's just some fun uh, painting on it. So even though they're smaller, you're not gonna light these, uh, I do really have to acknowledge that these are small, fun, well done model kits. And kind of the, uh, the more modern design and engineering and detail uh, really gives it the edge over some of those older, more vintage kits. All right, continuing our one 1000 scale model kits. Uh, the next three really are tied. I had to kind of assign them some numbers for this countdown. So number 14, is going to be the one 1000 scale USS Reliant. Number 13 is going to be the one 1000 scale USS Enterprise. And the number 12 in our countdown is going to be the TOS Enterprise and one 1000 scale. Now, if you're looking to make a cool display without spending a lot of money, the one 1000 scale is really where you get a good bang for your buck. Now these two, you can almost get them as a set. They're sold in mostly the same places. And there's an Aztec decal sheet that you buy that covers both of these ships with these wonderful Aztec decals. Uh, now, why are they above those larger ships like the Enterprise C and Enterprise E? Because uh, they're easy, they're fun, they go together well. And just, especially with those Aztec decals, you end up with some great looking models. Very, very accurate, very good paired up together. And of course, who doesn't want that Kirk versus Khan display on their shelves? Uh, really great, easy, simple model kits. You're probably not gonna light these unless you're really looking for a challenge. Uh, but at this size, you don't really need to. Just good, simple, small models. And I'm going to give a little bit of an edge. This is why the TOS was 12 and those guys were 13 and 14, because this model kit really comes jam packed with extra nacelles, extra end caps, extra bridge domes, uh, extra rear end caps. You can build it as the original pilot, the second pilot, or the production model of the USS Enterprise. And after decades and decades, of uh, the 18 inch classic or the 22 inch cutaway, which all had their problems. This really was the first time modelers had an out of the box, accurate representation of the classic USS Enterprise. So a fantastic model kit. Coming in at number 11 is once again, a model kit I don't have with me anymore. It's the 1 3 scale NX-01 and a very significant ship because it's the first time we were given a 350th scale USS Enterprise. And it really set the stage for some of the models that are going to be pretty high on this list, the other 350th scale ships. It did have its problems, but let's acknowledge first, it gave us a ton of clear parts to light it um, so that you don't have to drill out windows. You just had them open to start with and you could put in the clear parts. Um, it gave us great nacelles you could light up. It gave us a wonderful scale, but it absolutely had its problems, including an infamous twist along the rear pylons where you actually had to cut apart some location pins uh, to get things to line up where everything would be nice and straight. So it definitely had its flaws. 
but it could build up very well. It could be lit very nicely. And it set the stage for some better models coming up. Coming in at number 10 is our 1 2500th scale ships from Star Trek Discovery. And really with how massive uh, the producers made these ships, 1 2500th scale uh, really was the scale they had to be in. I mean, this one's pretty long, even being that tiny scale. We got some wonderful clear parts that let you light them. You got room inside them to run wires. I don't think I had to do very much modification at all to fit in the wires here. And I know the room's bright, but able to light up the engines, those long blue strips along the nacelles, light up the windows on the bridge dome. Uh, let's see the deflector dish. Um, you should be able to see that's lit up along with those clear blue stripes there. These models were just really well done, like the 1 1000s. They're small, they're simple, but they're detailed, and they make a fantastic display. Even holding this in my hands right now, man, I wish there was a bigger model of the USS Discovery. Um, yeah, it's a cool looking ship. This would be fun to light in a bigger model kit. It's a shame they've never made a bigger one and it's a shame the producers changed up the model so this design isn't even used in the later seasons. Uh, but very cool model and they were very, very well done. Coming in at number nine is the 1 1000 scale USS Defiant and maybe a little bit of recency bias on this one but I'm going to give it the edge over the Discovery ships and the other 1-1000 ships uh, because it's easy to light. You can see the warp nacelles, the rear engines, the little blue lights on top, and of course that deflector dish. Um, so easier to light. Also, a very fun paint job. The last few we've looked at, the Discovery ships and the 1-1000 scale movie ships, a lot of decals. Uh, one like this, thanks to the grid lines and different colored panels, uh, you can mask it off, you can hand paint it, you can do most of the work yourself, which is definitely fun. And that's why I'm kind of giving this one an edge over those other ships. All right, coming in at number eight, we have my only non-round two model that made the countdown. This is the USS Enterprise uh, made by Ravel as seen in the Kelvinverse movies. And this is a fantastic model kit that I think a lot of people tend to ignore. Uh, but first of all, this is a fantastic size. This is the size people really like the Enterprise to be because there's so much you can do here. You can light it easily. And we've talked about windows, the Excelsior not having any molded in, the C and the E having them molded, but you're either having to cut it through the translucent the opaque plastic or scrape paint off the translucent plastic. Um, this one has clear inserts for the windows. And I apologize, it looks like I have um, a short someplace in the stand so it moves, it turns off if I kind of shake it a little bit. But clear window inserts, and you can see how wonderfully uh, those windows look when you have those clear inserts. You have clear impulse engine grills that you can tint. Um, you can see the plastic is done in a very nice white, so you get the Raytheon spotlighting effects. Uh, you have a clear part for the deflector dish, so it's easy to light the deflector, and clear parts for those warp nacelle end caps. Uh, even kind of the rear pieces here are done in clear. So very, very nice to light. Hopefully we've got a good shot there of the deflector dish. But also, this model kit is big enough that you can do a really cool paint job. And this one's just gray on gray. Um, I used some Aztec templates and airbrushed it. Uh, but you can see a very cool Aztec pattern. So the size makes this one very attractive. Uh, the ability to light it makes it very attractive. Uh, I did some photo etch on this one. So maybe you can see there that we have a, a shuttle bay right there. Um, a very, very nice model kit, a wonderful size. You get to do a cool paint job. You get to light it. 
Um, I will kind of take some points off because I believe after seven years or so, I think those nacelles are drooping in the back a little bit. Um, I think that, I think these are just down a little bit. I think they used to be a little bit higher, uh, but all in all, fantastic model kit. If you can find yourselves one of these and you like the Kelvinverse movies at all, definitely a model to pick up. All right, now, before I continue the list, because everything after this are just fantastic model kits, um, there are three that I think are skips. Uh, I just, I wouldn't bother with them. The first is my latest one I reviewed, the K7 Space Station. Uh, frankly, it's, it's not accurate. It's not to scale. Um, it's boring to to paint. It's um, it'd be one thing if it was a boring paint job and it looked accurate because the actual space station is really cool. The well, the way those discs should open up and cargo should be unloaded in. It's it's just a model kit from decades ago that um, comes off a little bit boring and doesn't really fit that well and. It's not accurate. So uh, that's my thoughts on the K7. Um, the other model kit, and round two said for years they weren't going to put this model kit back on the market. They put it out a few years ago. I don't think they should have. That is the 1537th USS Enterprise. Like the K7, it's not accurate. And it's not just the small things like the lower sensor dome not being the right shape. It's that terrible texture all the way across it. But even that, you know, I could live with, except it doesn't hold its shape. Uh, those pylons and the cells, they are constantly misaligned. They flop, they fail. Tons and tons. You see modelers who a year later, the weight of those pylons have just pulled the engineering hull apart. That's really a model kit that should have been left in the past. We have two better versions, the 1 1,000th scale and the 350th scale. And frankly, if, if I were round two, I wouldn't want a new model builder getting that model kit and trying to build it and having all the frustrations we had in the 80s and 90s with that kit. I don't know that they would go back and truly discover the other gems that round two has put out, uh, like some we'll talk about in a few here, a few minutes on this video. Um, I think if that was someone's first encounter with the round two Star Trek model kits, I don't know that they would go back. So that model kit should have been left in the past. We have so much better ones. Uh, the third model kit I'd love a chance to talk about is the 1701D. Now, it's not really a skip because I know I'm going to be buying it uh, the next time it's released. Um, but why have we not had a new version of the 1701D released in the past 30 years? I mean, Star Trek The Next Generation, in many ways, it's superior to the original, but will never be as recognized. Uh, but for a big generation, that is their Star Trek. It ran for seven years. It brought us Deep Space Nine and Voyager, and the 1701D is the flagship of Enterprises. And yet we still have a model kit that's from the late 80s. And yeah, it has a texture a lot of people stand off, um, but it's not really accurate on the back neck. There's not a really good way to make the saucer detachable and retachable. Um, Surely with the technology now, there's a better way to cut in some of those windows and give us clear inserts um, and a better way to light it. The 1701D to run wires to those nacelles, you have to dig trenches in the pylons. You have to cover them up somehow, either with putty and you've lost that detail or photo etch to cover it up. Uh, why has that model kit never been retooled? Or why have we never been given anything else except for the little 2500th scale 1701D? Um, my guess is in the next few years, we'll see the 1701D re-released once again with Aztec decals, probably done in the translucent white plastic. I don't think that's enough for a ship of that stature. A ship like that should have another release with at least some new tooling 
to make it better, to make it easier, and to make it easier for the layperson to light those nacelles. So not really a skip, but it's not going to make it on this list because I really think the market is out there for a better, redone, retooled the 1701D. I mean, we've retooled the Voyager, we've retooled the Galileo, we've got multiple versions of the Enterprise Refit, multiple versions of the TOS. Uh, there's more versions of the Defiant than the 1701D. And frankly, for a flagship starship of the flagship show in the series, it baffles me that there's not another 1701D on the market. All right, <laughs> let's move on from that. Um, okay, coming in at number seven, this is really where we get into model kits that could be described as perfect. Um, so we have the Galileo Shuttlecraft. This is a model where Round 2 redid it from scratch and really came up with something absolutely beautiful. And once again, it was a replacement for a kit that many, many people had done in the past. But this is a kit just with absolutely fantastic detail. It's fantastically accurate. Um, and if you ever get a chance to look at the tiny little decals and signs all over this model kit, there's a little red plaque right in there. Um, the attention to detail on this kit is just absolutely incredible. And now that it does have an interior that you can buy with the kit, uh, that's really where it becomes the perfect model kit. You have a wonderful interior for all of you who love to paint dioramas. Uh, you've got some lighting options, even with the interior. There's room back here to put a little bit of light uh, for this back engine. You can still run lights in the nacelles, uh, but it's, it's fun to build up. Um, it's fun to do the interior. Um, some of you guys like to paint figures. I do not. That's not something I enjoy. Um, but this is a model kit that when they really did it from scratch, turned out perfectly. And this is a full and fantastic model kit. Coming in at number six is the most recent edition of the USS Voyager. This is one 1000 scale. This was the first one round two did it in the translucent white plastic uh, to really give you a fantastic option for opening up all of those little windows across the entire ship. That really was the right solution for this. It makes it nice, easy. The windows are even, super easy to, well, to light it. Uh, also, such a very satisfying little movement here to feel those nacelles click into their positions. So fantastic movement, fantastic engineering. It is a fun paint job. Once again, I can't discount how much difference it makes in a model if it's fun to paint. And you can see the little different panels you get to do, the little bit of shading, uh, pre-shading you get to do, and then the end result, a fantastically lit model, and it's in scale. I can put this with the 1 1,000th Defiant, I can put it with the 1 1,000th Movie Ships, and it makes a wonderful display. Scale matters, the fun of painting it matters, the frustration-free build matters, and overall, this is what a modern Star Trek kit should be. That's why it came in at number six on this countdown. The USS Voyager. Forget the old one from Ravel. This is the Voyager you want. Coming in at number five, the 1 350th scale USS Grissom. And yeah, you know, we're going to have a handful of 350th scale models in this top five. There's at least one coming up that is not 1 350th scale, but this is a fantastic model kit. Maybe a little bit of recency bias, but really when round two puts out a new model kit, when they tool something up from the ground, it turns out fantastic. These windows are clear inserts. And once again, when they're clear inserts, do you see how crisp they turn out when they're separate pieces? Um, I'm not sure if I can get you a good angle at the bottom of the saucer, but once again, there's some 
clear windows down there and just utterly fantastic little clear parts to make these running lights uh, running lights across most of the ship in the right places but frustration free building it looks great when it's completed um, I, I suppose I think I covered in the uh, original video it'd be nice if these lines on the side of the nacelle were engraved and not just decals but once again, good scale, easy to light, fun to build, and looks great on the shelf, looks great beside the 1 350th uh, USS Enterprise. That's why this one comes in at number five on the countdown. Coming in at number four, uh, the crown jewel of my collection, my favorite version of the USS Enterprise, the movie Enterprise, uh, this one specifically, I would call from the Undiscovered Country, um, in one 350th scale. It's three feet long. It is impressive. It is lit. Uh, you can see my warp nacelles lit. You can see my impulse grill lit. You can see the spotlights on the registry. You can see my Raytheon effect for that front saucer. And if you have not had a chance well, you're probably not following this channel if you haven't looked at people's builds of this model kit, but it is gorgeous. You see my deflector dish, lower saucer. Um, I don't go in for the blinking and the strobing, but you can see my navigation lights, my rear, my uh, reaction control thrust, thrusters. Um, this is really the statement build in a lot of people's collections. This is the build you spend a year on. Um, I think I've built this like three or four times. Um, this one I believe is the Aztec decals, giving that wonderful pattern across the top of the saucer. I've airbrushed it. Um, the best airbrushed Aztecs I did were earlier on the video on my Into Darkness Kelvinverse Enterprise. Uh, but this fantastic little model, um, you can see it has a cargo bay, it has shuttles. If you could look inside these windows, you'd be able to see that there's an arboretum. Um, mine has little magnets so that my little shuttlecraft and coop transports can actually dock. Let me just attach with little magnets here. So it's clear why this one is high up on the list. The scale, uh, the ability to do incredible things with it, and just how it looks in a room when it's complete and lit. And if you buy this, you better light it. There's no reason not to light a model of this stature. Um, do yourself a favor, spend some time on YouTube, look at other people's builds of this model. Mine is very average. There are absolutely incredible builds of this model kit out there on the internet. Coming in at number three, the 350th scale original series Enterprise. This is my work in progress and it has been for probably about a year. Why is it still undone? Um, I ask myself that a lot. You know, I have window masks for it. I could seriously start on a Sunday, mask all the windows and clear parts, paint the base coat on Monday and Tuesday, detail paint Wednesday, Thursday, decal on Saturday. I could finish this in a week. I can't pick the color. Um, I think I have to do the base coat on something this big with a spray paint and I'm nervous about how spray paints will actually look once they're on the model. I know I could mix little bottles of a color that I think would be perfect. Could I mix that as perfectly multiple times to cover this up and get extra coats? Um, that's my hesitation. So someday I'll bite the bullet, I'll clean it up, I'll mask it, and I will paint it. The hard part's done. It's built and it's lit uh, with the stock lighting kit. And you can see those super cool motors turning those fan blades. You see that wonderful lighting across the entire ship. Those wonderful windows in a warm white glow underside of the saucer. 
And of course, just like the refit, you can see we have a wonderful cargo bay uh, with shuttlecraft. And in a one-up, you should feel see that we have a bridge inside that saucer. All in all, take everything that was great about the refit, do it with slightly better engineering. I don't think there's any putty on this ship. A little bit of light sanding, but no light leaks. That is just how well this thing fits together. Uh, you can see the lighting kit that you can buy that's made to go with it. Does the motors. It does blinking red and greens. Absolutely a fantastic model kit worthy of being in our top three Star Trek models of all time. In my opinion, the second best Star Trek model kit of all time, the 1/350th scale Klingon Katinga. And this model is just a thing of beauty. I can't repeat it enough. A fun paint job matters. And when you see the paint job on the Katinga, you've got to know that is fun to paint. That is fun to detail. That's fun to tape. That's fun to airbrush. That's fun to weather. This is a fun model kit to paint. It's in scale. This model kit looks great paired up with that 350th refit we just saw. And yes, it is made for lighting. So you can see I've got those engines lit. You can see this engineering deck is lit. Uh, you can see the head of the ship and the bulb. All of that is lit. Uh, but what you don't see in this model kit is the wonderful engineering that goes into this. Um, I hope you can see how the LED here washes uh, the, the wing here and shines upon it. Same thing here. Uh, you should hopefully be able to see that there's light being cast. Um, there's light being cast across it by the little LED that's in here. When you look at this nacelle, you've got five points of light, two here, one on the back, two on the inside. All five of those are being done by one LED that's a little further back, and there's light piping driving that LED towards five different points. And you can see I'm holding it, no wires. That's because this comes off, and you have a battery pack right in there. Um, this is made to come off. It's made to just latch in and snap closed. Uh, Hopefully you can see the torpedo launcher right there in front, the blinking navigation light right there. Look at that fantastic decal that they managed to get all around that big 3D structure on the bottom of the ship. This model is just a lesson in attention to detail. It really hits on all notes. And the, the other things you can't see are the engineering. Most of these seams are beveled edges that almost dovetail into each other so that it blocks the light from the inside perfectly. Um, this, watch this. The engineering to hold this neck to this body is incredible. Uh, when you build this, you'll see the way it latches together. This is the strongest model that I have. Um, can you imagine the engineering that's doing this, holding up pylons for the USS Enterprise? This is incredible. I'm, I'm not gonna hold it like that too long, but I want you to understand the strength and engineering that went into this model kit. Um, it really is absolutely a thing of beauty. When you get to build this, you will understand the engineering that went into it. And if you can look at any of that detail, the detail across the top there, the detail done on these shoulders, uh, this is really just a model kit you have to build to appreciate how well it's done. If you can see the detail on the top of that bridge, um, an absolutely incredible model kit. 
a fantastic scale, a fantastic experience to build. And yeah, it looks good on a shelf staring down my hero ships. So that's why this is the number two Star Trek model kit ever made. And I do believe that in the next year, we're going to see a new edition of this. Uh, this is the ship in its fantastic greens as it was in Star Trek The Motion Picture. Um, it's how I see it in my head. But there'll be a version coming out that will be done more in the reds and the tans with extra accoutrement to make it up the way it was seen in Star Trek VI. So keep your eye out for that. But I really, I could rave all day about the Klingon Katinga. So what's my number one? What is the Star Trek model that I think is the best? Um, I'm not going to pick a 350th scale ship. I'm not going to pick something that um, is $100 plus for the kit and then can reach up to $200 once you're adding on accessories. Um, that's just not the best model. I'm not going to pick something that is utterly huge and you have to build an entire bookshelf for it. I love the 350th scale ships. Uh, and they are something absolutely special. Um, but that's not what the majority of the model kits are. Here's my number one. The USS Enterprise, as seen in Star Trek Discovery, 1-1000 scale. Now, first of all, price. This is much, much better than those big 350th scale USS Enterprises. Uh, secondly, size. I love my 350th scale ships but they're huge. Uh, this is a model kit anyone can go get. Everyone's gonna have room for this on a shelf in a place of pride. This is the sweet spot for a Star Trek model kit and I'm not gonna discount that. This is roughly the size of the classic TOS Enterprise. It's roughly the size as that uh, 537th Enterprise. I don't think anybody should be buying anymore. This is the model kit to buy if you want a modern but classic USS Enterprise on your shelf. Um, this one I've done stock. This is a decal set you can buy to go along with the model kit by round two. This one has a lighting kit that you can buy from round two to put into it, super easy. This is an easy, accessible model, very easy to make and to make look good. That's something that Making some of those 350th scale enterprises, it's hard. That's why I haven't finished my TOS 350th yet. So here is my stock lighting kit with motorized nacelles, with windows with clear inserts, a nice, simple, bookshelf-sized USS Enterprise. Uh, it's, it's really... It's the epitome of a Star Trek model. It's fun to make. This is in scale with other model kits. You can Aztec it by airbrushing it. You can decal it. Uh, this is a model kit that a beginner can make look good. Uh, this is a model kit that an expert can do all sorts of things with photo etch, with adding a cargo bay, with adding a detailed bridge. This is a blank canvas that is going to look good no matter what your skill level is. The engineering is frustration free. Now, not only does this kit look great, the engineering on this is once again, top notch with most of these joints dovetailing into each other. So you don't have to worry about light leaks, but that's not all. Um, this is made for lighting in that there are actually standoffs inside the kit to hold your LEDs and point them at these windows throughout the entire ship. When we talk about the little bits of lighting, there are tiny clear parts along most of these grills to catch the light and help you light them. Even down here where we have our registry, there are tiny clear parts that are angled on the inside to catch the light from LEDs and cast light along those registry numbers. In fact, it's even made so you have access to the electronics and the wiring after the model's built. And this end cap is simply held on by friction. 
tiny clear inserts for all of the windows makes it once again very crisp windows very easily done and you can see tiny molded in windows up here on the bridge and tackling the other big problem that we used to have in enterprise models these pylons actually go through the hull and connect to each other so each of them is connected to each other, holding each other up. So this model will hold its shape uh, really forever. So incredible engineering made for lighting. You can see there's room there. Even if you don't do the suggested lighting kit that they sell for it, there's so much room here. You can add your own motors, your own fins, your own effects, uh, really just stellar engineering, a top notch build made for lighting. This is an incredible model kit. Uh, and the design of the Starship is just absolutely gorgeous. I could not have asked for a better update of the USS Enterprise. And for all those reasons, I feel this is the epitome of an exceptionally well done, good looking Star Trek model kit. The Enterprise from Discovery in 1 1000 scale, in my opinion, the top of the line when it comes to Star Trek models. Thank you for going down that journey with me. Thank you for sticking with the video. Um, thank you for letting me put a few rants out there. Uh, but looking at these model kits one by one over the years, um, it's hard in those video formats to actually say this model kit is better than this model kit when in reality, there are absolutely model kits that are better than other ones. And I'm glad I was able to put forth my personal opinions out there. Um, it always kind of ruffles me up a little bit because I'm sure there are people out there who are buying um, like the, the uh, classic USS Enterprise and thinking that represents all of what round two puts out and they'll never experience the real gems like this model kit. Um, so I want to kind of put it out there that there are some model kits that are better than others, uh, but no matter what the model kit, it's about what you're willing to put into the hobby. Absolutely, all of these model kits that I've shown today can be made to look incredible. Um, my builds, once again, very average builds. I think they're what an average modeler can put into a model if they put a little bit of time into it, but every one of these by a modeler who just puts a little bit of passion into their work uh, can be really made into something very, very special. So even if I said something bad about a model kit you love today, um, don't worry about it. Just take that model kit, put yourself into it, and you will have something to be proud of. So once again, thank you for following the channel. Uh, thank you guys for following the builds. I'd love to hear your thoughts uh, in the comments or on Facebook of what you think the best model kits are. I'd also like to know if you'd like a similar video going over Star Wars model kits. Um, I tell you, there's a much wider range of quality in the Star Wars model kits than there are on Star Trek. Uh, but yeah, that's all I have for today. Thank you guys very much and I'll be back soon. Does my nacelle look kind of bent here? It probably should. Um, it got much, much too close to a soldering iron at one part of the build and a good inch and a half here just flat out melted. Had to be rebuilt with uh, some putty and epoxy. And yeah, you know, that was in the middle of COVID lockdown. So didn't really have too much I could do there, but I was able to rebuild it to where, put it this way on the shelf, no one notices that mistake.